So recently, um, this came out. A NORAD jets intercept joint Russian-Chinese bomber flight near Alaska. This was July of twenty or July 25th, 2024. And you can see the picture, two CF-18 Hornets, two F-35s and two F-16 Vipers from NORAD uh, ID'd and intercept the uh, Tu-95 and the PRC-H6 aircraft in the Alaska ADES. And you probably, did, Alf, did you spend a lot of time, I guess, in that area? Is that kind of similar? Kinda? Alaska, not so much because there were American uh, assets in Alaska doing that. But actually for several weeks, I think the F-15 had all kinds of uh, structural problems. So we actually sent some Hornets to hold alert at their base. So was it uh, uh, Isleson or Anchor somewhere in that area in, in uh, Alaska? So this wasn't staged at all. Two two F 18s two F thirty fives. No, no, no. NORAD didn't plan this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tanker so support and everything. So what <laughs> SecDef says is Lloyd, or Lloyd, Lloyd Austin says this is the first time we've seen these two countries fly together. They didn't enter our airspace. It's about 200 miles away. Obviously worried about the Exocet anti-ship missile gonky. Uh, <laughs> it's very effective. Yeah. During the flight, the Russian and Chinese crews worked out issues of cooperation during all stages of the air patrol, according to a release from the Russian Ministry of Defense. They always tell the truth. Yeah, they never <laughs> lie. But it says Russian Aerospace Forces Su-30 uh, SM and Su-35S aircraft carried out air cover in the joint flight uh, for, for the, I guess, for the duration uh, was five hours, according to the uh, Ministry of Truth and Defense. During the patrol, the uh, both counters strictly obeyed the provision of international law. There's been no violation of airspace. Yeah, so that's kind of the first time we've seen them operating together. And I don't, I don't know, Alf. What I mean, what do you think based on what you've seen in your experience? How do these intercepts kind of play out? I mean, have you done any inter that you can talk about? Obviously, I mean, have you done intercepts like this? And kind of what, what's going on? You know, from your perspective. Uh when it came to real world, there there was a lull in uh, Russian bear traffic because there were two types of missions the bears would do. They they would do the cruise missile deployment where they would uh, they'd fly off of uh, Labrador and uh, Baffin Island. They'd come in, they'd simulate a missile launch, and then they'd turn around and go back home. And then they had another one, which was a transit of, I think it's the bear Delta, the, the one with the uh, big radar in the back. And it would be going to Cuba to do ASW, anti-submarine anti warfare stuff. So those are two main missions. I was uh, on alert one time. <clears throat> we got the call, configure with, uh, with, with weapons and uh, all the fuel you can put on it. And uh, I was waiting for an airborne alert because we would get hours and hours notice of this because it takes them a long time to come. And so... There's air defense radars in Norway and then in England and then in Scotland. And like they were tracked all the way across. And that with the CF-18 is that we often didn't have tanker support. And so we would forward deploy to Goose Bay. So it's 500 miles closer. So we'd go to Goose, refuel and sit and wait. If we happen to be in Bagafield or in Goose, we would uh, go to Gander sometimes, depending on where they were. And so we'd, uh, I was told, get ready to go. And uh, then we changed out crews and the other two guys went. It was a bit of a dog's breakfast. Now they have satellite communications and better comms links. But back then there were NORAD repeater stations and hundreds of miles off the coast. It was really tough to talk to anybody. So, and you'd get a vector from NORAD. And then you look at the radar and, well, wait a minute, I got these big blips over here. But so the, the 12 second sweep and all that and and the problems they had with gaps in their coverage and they were estimating. So it's, uh, it was very difficult to really be on top of NORAD exercises because there's just so much distance involved and poor communications, but it's better now. Wow. Would they be, uh, I mean, would those intercepts sometimes drag out? Like, I mean, as far as like flight time? If you were lucky enough to have a tanker that had a probe and drogue system and you weren't uh, like a USAF tanker would show up and you go, oh, sorry, you can't do anything for me. <laughs> but uh, 
then you, you could end up going, you know, following these guys for a while. But we had tactics where one would go in, we had to take pictures, uh, get certain serial numbers in certain places. And then, but the other Hornet would always be standing off weapons locked just in case they pulled anything stupid yeah. and ready to mm -hmm. take a shot. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome.